Hello, friends. Welcome in to the pregame show for Cubs versus Sox here on June 19, 2019. The Crosstown Classic continues. The White Sox won last night in a some crazy fashion. But before we get to all that and we lead into game two of this four game series two at Wrigley two at the cell, they finished this off in July. Why don't we go ahead and get all the plugs in? Follow us all over the universe. I'm on Twitter at mercado2333. You can follow the network at Mercado Airwaves. You can also follow our pop culture show at Good Brothers Pod. Follow the lovely Nicole Mancha at Typey One Tipsy and the good brother himself, Alex Mercado at Mercado21. Alex, we're on YouTube, youtube.com slash Mike Mercado2333. Like us right here on Facebook at facebook.com slash Mercado Airwaves Network. We're all on Instagram. You can follow the lovely Nicole Mancha at Typey One Tipsy. The good brother himself is at Mercado2121. And I'm at Mike Mercado2333. And follow our true crime show at Murder Mysteries and more. Download the podcast, like, or review anywhere you get it at iTunes, SoundCloud, Podbean, Stitcher, wherever it's at, at Mercado Airwaves. And please like, rev rate, review, and share us. It really helps us out. And of course, if you want to hear our interviews ad free and before anybody else with athletes and celebrities, you can visit us at patreon.com slash Mercado Airwaves. Well, with that all of the way, let's get right into it. Last night, three to one, the White Sox won. And if you joined us on yesterday's episode, um, it kind of came down to two things. It came down to everything we kind of mentioned, not even just the two things. Cubs couldn't get runs. The bullpen couldn't hold the lead. And uh, a bad, bad man came up to plate for the Chicago White Sox. And uh, I kind of the, took the time to break it down this way. So this is how it started, right? You know, a pitch right down the pipe. From a uh, certain closer uh, right now who um, is wild. And, you know, quite honestly, what was crazy about this play is it was inside on Eloy. And it was a broken bat. But that's how strong Eloy is. And, um, you know, he got all of it. All 400 feet of it. And celebrated. And really made this one of the most historic nights in the rivalry between these two teams that's what's really crazy about this is when you really think about the magnitude of this rivalry we mentioned it on yesterday's show it's a very competitive rivalry and there's a lot of moments and Eloy doing it is not only is it good for this rivalry I think it's really good for baseball I think it's really good that the Cubs and White Sox have names that can really push this forward. You know, like I think what what's really interesting is where we where we go from 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 last night to tonight. You know, and I think for the White Sox, it was really not only just a proving moment, but it was a moment for the rest of baseball as a signification that maybe we're not going to win the World Series. Maybe we're not going to make the playoffs, but we're here. You're not going to steamroll us. And if you're the Cubs, it's kind of the same story. It's been for almost two years now. You can't score runs. And, you know, I, I'm, not, I'm not convinced that this Cubs, because obviously the Brewers lost yesterday, so the Cubs are only a half game back. I'm not convinced that the Cubs are not going to be able to turn this around. But without a shadow of a doubt, they have – I think they've totally regressed. I think they're 10 and 15 in their last 25 games. They've had a horrible last month. And if you're the White Sox, this is one of the guys, one of your future superstars that you're hoping for. And he's the one that came out and shined. And, you know, again, I'm not going to, I'm not going to be that Debbie Downer that takes you takes away the momentum. That was a big win. That was something that you could really get behind. And I'm, I'm, I really do hope that the White Sox fans and that organization in, enjoys it because it wasn't fluky either. You know, it was they made the right trade at the right time, which is so crazy, too. It's just how poetic it was. You know, Eloy, oh, he even mentioned they did a Chuck Garfine on uh, NBC Sports Chicago did a great thing about it. Basically saying he always thought Eloy was good. Eloy always thought that he was going to do it with the Cubs. That his first home run at Wrigley, that his first you know home run in his whole career would be at Wrigley with the Chicago Cubs. And obviously with that Jose Quintana trade, didn't work out that way. 
It worked out lovely for the for the White Sox, that's for sure. And yeah, I think it's fair to say now that the White Sox won that trade. I think that's fair. And I'll look it up on Twitter right now if you guys haven't seen it yet. These are the lineups for today's game that has a 705 first pitch. It is John Lester versus Lucas Giolito. What a matchup. Holy cow. That's going to be a lot of fun. Yesterday was a fun game, too, between Nova and, and Cole Hamels. Shout out to Cole Hamels and, uh, and Nova. They, and the, the Cubs obviously know Nova from him being a Pittsburgh Pirate. So that doesn't surprise me. But Kyle Schwarber, first pitch, leading the game off with a home run. I thought for sure this was going to be the floodgates. Now, tonight might be the, fo the floodgate game for one of these two teams. But the Cubs need a W. And here are their starting lineups. You have Kyle Schwarber leading off. Chris Bryan, Anthony Rizzo, Javi Baez, Wilson Contreras, Jason Hayward, David Bodie, John Lester, and Albert Almora Jr. And it's nice to see David Bodie at second base and Wilson Contreras at catcher, obviously with Caratini and Descalso. You didn't get any pop in the back. Give me one second, guys. Let me roll this so that we don't lose power in the middle of filming. And then for you Southsiders, you have Garcia, Anderson, Obreu, McCann, Jimenez, Moncada, Cordell, uh, excuse me, Sanchez, and obviously Giolito. So this is, again, this is going to be a fascinating game between these two teams. And I just want to see, you know what? Here's the interesting, the interesting thing as well. I've seen Nova play pitch well against the Chicago Cubs. And I've seen this Cubs team go cold at the bats. What I've not seen is Lucas Giolito play well against a team like the Chicago Cubs. He's had... A great stint, no doubt. I forgot which uh, one of the teams he just won. But he, the, and the White Sox are going through mur murderer's row right now and playing pretty damn well. This is a real testament to L Lucas Giolito. And if I'm a White Sox fan, I'm super excited about this kid. Without, he's going to, and when, when you get Dylan Cease, which is eventually going to happen, and, I mean, I, and Kopech comes back healthy, one, two, three, and with that lineup, it's filthy. So, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm, this game is going to be very interesting to, to see how it all plays out. Now, what do I see happening today? Well, it's going to go one or two ways, right? Lucas Giolito is going to dominate, or the Cubs are going to absolutely blow this game open. There's not really, what, there's not really anything else that this is going to be. And I'm not sure what it's going to take for this offense to take off. And I want everybody to pay attention to this. I heard this on, I believe it was the score. I believe it was Lawrence Holmes this afternoon. A look for all you who are listening to us. Thank you, first of all, for who are joining us. But uh, for all you who are out of towners, that is uh, uh, the score. Lawrence Holmes is one of the midday guys. He has his own show. And he mentioned Javi Slash line the last like two weeks is all point ones basically. It's like 158, 153, and like point three something. Horrible. And a lot of, maybe it's a lot of that injury, where, whether it was that slide that messed up his shoulder or, you know, who knows with Javi. He's always hustling and always – that is one of the, the interesting aspects of this is the guy who was your MVP throughout most of – all of last season and was carrying you this season for the most part, he's not playing very well. And that, that old adage of, you know, you go, we go, definitely it applies to Javi nowadays. So I'm not too sure where – I don't know if, if how they're going to be able to wake out from this slump. It, it has to come from from Javi, and it has to come from Chris Bryant. It has to come from Anthony Rizzo. And Kyle Schwarber leading off again, I don't know how much that affects this team. I know people want to make that the narrative, but you only lead off once a game. And I know it's a tempo setter, but Kyle Schwarber hit a home run to lead off the game yesterday, and it didn't mean anything. So – uh, I know a lot of you guys had fun leading into last night's game, but uh, that pretty much wraps up things here. We just wanted to get out here and praise Elo Jimenez. And you know what? I will say this. You know, a lot of people always wondered whether or not how I was going to kind of take, because, I, you know, a lot of people, when they knew me throughout high school and growing up and, you know, before me in this profession, there wasn't able to have this perspective of just watching these teams and, you know, it's a job. And I'll be honest with you, I'm, as much as it hurts as a Cub fan to see Eloy win the White Sox, win at, for anybody, a game basically on a walk-off at Wrigley Field, 
on top of everything against the bullpen that a lot of people have question marks against in a game that the offense hasn't didn't do anything. You know, I appreciate the fact, though, that he's in the city and that I get to cover him and that there is a chance within the next two years, depending on how things go, you have great matchups and endless possibilities. Now, I also want to mention this, though. Things have, are not going great for the Cubs. Now, I know it's crazy to say when they, 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 they're they above 500, they're only a game behind Milwaukee, a, a half a game behind Milwaukee in the standings, but there's a weird thing going on. Like, Ke- Craig Kimbrough is not going to come in and help this offense score runs. This is what this comes down to. When the Cubs won the World Series in 2016, when the Cubs were at their best, they're putting runs on. And I know it's cliche, but they're tearing the leather off the ball and they're scoring four, five, six, seven runs. There's no pressure on the bullpen. And that's a best case scenario. But, I mean, they're not healthy. They're not hating. They're missing Ben Zoparis. Their bullpen is questionable. And their offense is stagnant. You don't win a World Series with that. And mind you, we had, what, those three weeks in, in May where they were rolling. And people, I, you know, I was one of them. I'm willing to say they're World Series favorites. But when there's these dips, you know, you have to play consistent ball. And you're not going to win all of them, but the Cubs aren't consistent. They have all the talent in the world. And, and this is also what it comes down to. These are the guys that are going to do it. They're not going to bring anybody else for help. So... All right, guys, it is time we head out of here. It is almost time for first pitch. Leave all your comments and thoughts about game one. And if you watch this after game two, let us know your reactions to everything. We'll be back with more Sports from the Couch here on Mercado Airwaves. Before all that, make sure you guys are following us and you guys could check out all the awesome stuff that we're doing right over here. You guys can see it. Let me put it right. Let me see if I can point it. All that stuff right there. Follow us there. All of that. Follow. I don't want to spew all of it. And enjoy Cubs versus Sox. Thank you, everybody, for joining us on Sports from the Couch here on Mercado Airwaves. I'm Mike Mercado.